Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here to talk about eVPN root type. In last session, we discussed about eVPN VXLAN and understood that eVPN VXLAN is a combination of eVPN and VXLAN. eVPN is a control plane technology which uses MPBGP to advertise layer two and layer three information. MPBGP eVPN have different root type to carry different information. Like we have type one, two, three, four, and five. Also have few other root type that are used for multicast. In this session, we are going to focus on root type two, three, and five. Let's start with root type two. Type two root is also known as MAC advertisement root and used to advertise MAC address, ARP entry, and routing information of host. Here is the table that describe different fields in type two root. Let's understand a bit more about type 2 root. So when host comes up, it will send GR to inform others that this is my MAC address and this is my IP address. Leaf1, which is also known as VTAP, will learn the MAC address from ingress frame and store it in MAC address table. Also, it will learn IP information from GR and store it in ARP table. Now, this MAC and IP information will be installed into BGP eVPN table and eVPN type two root will be used to advertise this information across VXLAN fabric. I mean, the remote leaf devices will receive type two root and update their database accordingly. So overall, what's happening here is, leaf will learn the MAC address of directly connected neighbor from ingress frame, like DSCP, R, GR and then leaf will advertise this information using eVPN type 2 root and remote leaf devices will receive this information and update their database accordingly. Okay, now let's have a look at packet capture. As I said before, IP address is optional field in type two root. Means we will have two scenarios. One, when IP address is not available. Means MAC only root. One, when IP address is available. Means MAC in IP root. Here is the packet capture. In packet capture, we have RD which is used to maintain uniqueness eVPN root. Then we have MAC address length, which is always 48 bit. And then we have a respective MAC address. As this is MAC only root, IP address is not included. Then we have MPLS label one which is L2VNI. L2VNI is used for breezing. We also have additional information like RT encapsulation. Here is another capture where we have IP address along with other information like RD, Ethernet segment identifier, 
Ethernet tag ID, MAC address length, and respective MAC address, IP address length, and particular IP address. MPLS label one, which is L2 VNI, VNI 20, which is used for brazing. Then we have MPLS label two, which is L3 VNI. We also have additional attribute like encapsulation RT. Hope we understood the role of type two root and how it works and how it looks. Right? Time to start with root type three. Before starting with root type three, let's have a look at traffic forwarding. Please pause the video and understand the topology. We have two hosts in each VLAN and we want communication between host one and host three. Host one and host three are in same VLAN, VLAN 10. And VLAN 10 is associated with VNI 110. I am assuming that control plane learning is already completed and leaf one knows about host three, same way leaf two knows about host one. When host one sends the traffic to host three, then traffic will be received by leaf one, which is known as VTAP. Leaf one will encapsulate the traffic and send it to leaf two. Leaf two will decapsulate the traffic and send it to host three. Hope you are good with flow so far, right? In this particular case, we are handling known unicast traffic means destination MAC address is known. But what if destination MAC address is unknown, broadcast or multicast? So when VTAP receive bum traffic, broadcast, unknown unicast or multicast traffic, then VTAP will replicate the traffic to the peers that are configured with respective VNI, correct? Now, you may have questioned that, how does VTAP1 knows that VTAP2 have VNI 110? However, other VTAP does not have VNI 110 or a particular VNI. So here, root type three will come in picture. I mean, each VTAP will use eVPN root type three to communicate that I have XYZ VNI configured. And if you have bump traffic for that particular VNI, then count me in. Make sense? This is the purpose of root type three. So overall, root type three is used to create ingress replication list. When we say ingress replication list, means list of VTAPs where device will send bump traffic. Bump traffic means broadcast, unknown unicast, or multicast. In VXLAN environment, there are two ways to handle bump traffic, multicast, and ingress replication. In multicast, each VNI will be mapped to a particular multicast group. So when VTAP receive bum traffic, then it will send it to a particular multicast group. Means only VTAP that, that is part of that particular multicast group will receive the traffic. This is optimal way of handling bum traffic. Another way to handle bum traffic is known as ingress replication. We can define in ingress replication list manually or in eVPN environment, 
AVPN root type 3 will be used to create ingress replication list. Make sense? At this point, we understood type 2 and type 3 routes. Now, let's discuss about type 5 route. So, route type 5 is used to advertise IP prefixes for inter subnet connectivity. Here is the table that describe different field in type 5 root. Overall, what we are doing here is we will bring directly connected root or static, statically configured root or dynamically learned root into BGP control plane via redistribution. And these root will be seen as type 5 root. Like here, we are redistributing 10.10.20.0 into BGP control plane and being seen as type 5 root. Here is the packet capture. This is for type 5 root, where we have different field like RD, Ethernet segment identifier, Ethernet tag ID, IP prefix length, which is slash 24, and particular subnet, which, which is being carried inside type 5 root 10.10.20.0. Then we have gateway and L3 VNI. We also have additional attributes like encapsulation RT. I have included one slide where I have taken type 2 root, type 3 root, and a type 5 root for comparison. Okay? Hope you understood type 2, 3, and type 5 root. Thank you.